Um, so you really cannot tell pathologically, and even series where they've done much more intricate biology on the cells, they came out the same. And what they've said is those are different ends of the same spectrum of, of disease. So, I, you know, what I think really, you, you know, that, that they should be considered the same. So at Sick Kids, we looked at our um, series of skin only under a year. We found 22 patients with skin only disease. Like the others, significantly more patients with skin in the young patients than the older ones, and you can see that's very significant. And what do we see? I'm very similar to the older child. So the commonest would be this picture, which is cradle cap. But it's, this is a very severe and much more typical of LCH because you can see there's some um, what we call purpuric areas, which means blood spots sort of in the skin, and a very severe cradle cap. But I have seen patients with LCH that looked like classic cradle cap, where you could not fault a dermatologist for saying this is just cradle cap. The difference is it didn't go away and it kept coming back and back. And that's a lesson, lesson we're trying to teach. If you have this picture and it doesn't get better quickly or it keeps coming back, you've got to at least think of LCH and do the biopsy. The other thing we teach is this, which is um, the involvement of the perineum, which is the second commonest in the groin and creases. And again, that the lesson we're trying to teach is if this doesn't get better and keeps coming back, because you can't fault people for saying this is just diaper rash. You know, that's what happens in 99.9% .9 of the patients. But if it keeps coming back and it doesn't get better, you've got to think of LC. So those are the commonest, but pretty much they presented anywhere, and they could look like pretty much anything. And that's the other unfortunate thing about skin in any age, is that it can look like anything. There isn't any type of rash that cannot be LCH, although there are some that are commoner than others. Anyway, so back to our series. Um, this is by one of our fellows and myself. Like the others, if they were multi-system, we did have the same mortality as everybody else described. But the single system is what's interesting because we had 12 patients with only skin that, and 10 were watched. One very early was treated with chemotherapy. One patient unfortunately died of SIDS, a sudden infant death, so never really um, survived to become, you know, to have a risk of anything else. But the, the point is that four of the 10 progressed to multi-system disease between five weeks to five months in our series. and in. Occasionally, that was that was fatal. So, the, if we looked at the patients um, that were multi-system disease, and then asked the question, when, what symptom did they present with first, and when did it happen? Many of them presented with skin only. So, if we took those patients into account, it was as high as 60%. So, somewhere in there is the risk of progression if you have skin only disease. What does that mean? Well, let me show you a couple of the slides, and then I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you what I think it means. So this is a classic Hashimoto Pritzker, congenital self-healing reticular histocytosis. A young baby at sick kids watched, everything disappeared, and another one. This baby is interesting. He was born with skin-only disease. Um, we did the complete workup. There was absolutely nothing else. So we watched them. We didn't reassure the mother. The dermatologist did. We did not. We said, this could come back. We have to watch. And this is what happened one month later. Great, huh? Terrific. The skin is great. At the same time, he developed liver and spleen and lung and disease. So the same thing, unfortunately, that happens in LCH, that one area can get better while another one is getting worse, happened with this kitty. He responded to therapy. He's fine. But the point I would make is that with skin only, at first diagnosis, you have to do a very careful workup, and that includes radiologic examinations and includes CT and even things that give you some radiation exposure. It's very important to make sure they're only skin only. If they are, you can watch them. They don't necessarily need treatment at all. You treat for symptoms, like the, the other lady was talking about earlier. If there's pain, you could treat it, and you may need to treat only locally, only topically. In fact, I think you should not over-treat skin-only disease. So you treat for symptoms. You treat for ulceration. You treat for pain. Try not to treat for cosmetic reasons, which some people do, and, and see what happens.
things, but if you have to treat, you do try topical treatment first before you go to the systemic treatment. But you do need to watch them carefully. If the babies are well, I do not repeat anything with radiation exposure, but if there's a symptom, of course you do. And some of those will progress to, to possibly life-threatening disease. So my take on this is you should not make this diagnosis at first sight. This is a diagnosis you should make in retrospect after a few years of follow-up. And I've had this argument with dermatologists in the audience. I don't care. This is the lesson to that they should be teaching. Follow these babies. Don't make the diagnosis until you followed them for a few years and made sure nothing has happened. Most of the kids that progress to multi-system disease, uh, the, the organ, risk organ disease, do that relatively early. But later on, there has been the occasional one, not a lot, that have developed diabetes insipidus. And I'll show you quickly one of those figures, or, or bone. So low risk disease even later, but it's it's not common. So if it's going to progress, I think it's going to tend to do it relatively early. But they need careful watching, and I tend to watch them for a couple of years, although I spread it out. So I'll see them at least every month for the first few few six months, spread it out to every three months, every six months, once a year, um, relatively quickly. So this is multi-system disease, and you can see the risk organ involvement clearly, the liver outlined, the spleen outlined here, and the, the significant skin rash. As we mentioned, there is a relatively high mortality, but there is, are a few patients in the series that did survive without therapy, but none of them had risk organ involvement. So there is a small number, even of multi-system, that may spontaneously disappear. But the probability of survival in the newborn is lower. The other thing about it is there is a risk of diabetes insipidus in this group as there is in the older group and other maybe permanent consequences. So I believe that all multi-system patients need therapy but adapted to their risk. They don't all need the same therapy, but I believe they do need therapy. Um, and then this final thing, which we've debated and debated. If you have a child with scalp or skin disease that goes on and on, do they have a risk for going on to a permanent consequence? And the answer is yes, but it's a relatively small um, risk. Only a few patients in the literature with skin only who have developed um, disease. Really, there's one, you know, a couple of case reports. And I think this is the sort of thing people would report as well. Um, so in this series of 19, there was one patient with skin only. And again, the type of lesions did not predict the outcome. So what do we conclude from this? Um, newborn with LCH does differ from the older infant and child. They do have more multi-system disease and more risk organ disease. And if they do, there is a higher mortality even with therapy. Um, single system LCH in the newborn usually means skin and not bone. And you can certainly watch and wait, but all must be carefully watched, and some will progress to, to disease, but I think relatively early, not, not very much later. And then a small number may develop diabetes insipidus and late effects. Okay, thank you.